Uh, good afternoon. I uh, would like to thank uh, to Jeffrey Sachs and uh, the distinguished speakers uh, who replied to the Institute for Advanced Study in Relevant Culture and Civilization and the Black Sea University Network invitation to participate in, the, in this uh, video conference moderated by uh, Professor Eden Mahmoud. The topics of my opening address is the world health crisis, a historic change for a new global political project, uh, with a special uh, emphasis of the responsibility of the uh, academic media. In order to understand what the world uh, will look like after the pandemic, we must first understand the present we inhabit and learn from the lessons of the recent uh, past. The past months have uh, highlighted two major positive uh, aspects. The personal responsibility of individuals who, irrespective of particular political regimes, of the quality of administration, of the varying degrees of economic and social development, have shown a high civic responsibility. And the degree of which advancement in communication technology could prove uh, useful in the event of a pandemic. At the same time, the global situation highlighted the mediocrity of political leaders, the inefficiency of economic and financial system based on maximizing profits in solving matters of public health, the limitation of current medical science and of science in general, as well as the risk associated with technology unbridled progress. Two tales from our childhood the emperor's new clothes and the sorcerer's apprentice seem transformed into modern day reality. In hindsight, in the first two decades of the 21st century, mankind experienced two crises. The crisis of globalized terrorism beginning with September 11th. Uh, 2001, and the financial crisis between uh, 2004 to 2009. After each of these crises, we were told, uh, as we are again being told in the present crisis, that the world will not be the same. However, our post-crisis experience has shown that the world uh, did in fact remain the same and that in, uh, in time since even got worse. The repressive action that followed 9-11 uh, uh, did not end terrorism. On the contrary, terrorist act became more frequent because the solution were limited to foreign military intervention and intensifying uh, internal security measures instead of pursuing broad international efforts to create a culture of peace. The disastrous effect of the economic crisis uh, of 2004-2009 uh, brought on by reckless uh, fiscal policies, policies were not primarily felt either by the banks nor by the banking system itself which played an essential role in its uh, propagation. Neither were ratings agencies blamed on their credibility questions. So the existing system continued unhindered laying the groundwork for similar crises in the future. Betrayed by the administration, it was the citizens themselves who had to suffer and pay the price for the crisis. 
the military industrial complex, the political leadership and the banking system proved incapable to deal with this crisis back then. We cannot expect them to do so now. When uh, the Great Depression hit in uh, 1929, Albert Einstein stated that the crisis cannot be solved by those who produce it. This is why I believe that as long as political leadership is dominated by mediocrity and populism, and the economic milieu focuses solely uh, on maximizing the profit, it falls to the academic milieu to elaborate a strategy that can protect mankind, citizens, and democracy alike, and to control the ways in which technological progress and biomedical research can ensure the common good and limit their negative effects. Current government, obsessed with uh, adherence to regulation preventing the uh, virus uh, further spread on the one hand, and uh, with uh, budgetary restriction on the other, may uh, well see the trees, but lost sight on the forest. It is high time that the academic and research community got involved in a debate on the future of the human society. In a globalized world, where the main social actors are only interested in achieving aims uh, uh, concurrent to their own interests, the only critical voice, voice can come from the academic milieu, which can underpin and analyze this capability of tackling intervening economic, social, cultural, educational, and moral issues. Today, we have a responsibility to work together for the common good, owing to our immediate social responsibility to prevent the abuses of power that could occur as a result of the state of emergency under which most of the world is placed. Let me to be clear, I am not referring to a direct involvement into politics of uh, scientists or of the members of the academic media. The moment of 1989-1990, when the intellectual elite of Eastern Europe successfully mobilized millions of people to end the dictator regimes and the Cold War, remain unique in history. In my opinion, the phenomenon of liberated population who elected uh, university rectors, writers, uh, philosophers and scholars as the first democratic heads of state and government cannot be replicated in the current uh, century. In the current context, uh, of financial interest uh, groups, either overtly or covertly manipulating public opinion, uh, coupled with the degradation of uh, social climate, the top representative of the current academic milieu cannot engage in, in but are called upon to arbitrate and coach the political game. There can be a positive collaboration between the academic and uh, political spheres. In order to answer the challenges uh, inherent to times of rapid change, politics can draw inspiration from science in order to reorganize along shared uh, values an authentic and balanced dialogue they uh, favors an exchange of ideas and uh, respect for the truth. 
the academic milieu can be viewed as a precursor and a model for cooperation without exclusion or liminality. Intellectual solidarity can uh, constitute a foundation for creating a new global political uh, architecture. Does the academic milieu have uh, anything to learn from politics? Certainly. It can learn from the successes and moreover from the failures of the political environment in order to become more prudent in crafting economic, political and social projects for which uh, sorrow impact assessment surveys have yet to be carried out and how implementation is uh, outsourced to third parties. From statement experience, academics and scholars can learn what it means to be responsible for decisions that dictate the lives, freedom, and sometimes the death of millions, and which can lead to the collapse, emergence, and progress of entire countries. Let us not forget that statement can pay for this decision with uh, their careers, with their liberty, or even with their life. The academic and university establishment must be cleansed of the virus of populism and science's fundamental mission must be reaffirmed, the search for truth. Academic research does not hinge on political correctness and scientific truth is not certified by the number of likes, shares or outvote it receives. Yet, in order to restore the academic environment to its previous capacity as an intellectual and moral model, we must rectify the compromises which academic research and higher education have made in the pursuit of financing interests or uh, enhancing visibility. To use scientific discoveries for the common good and in uh, respect of universal values is a moral responsibility to society in its entirety, especially so in an age of digital discoveries that threaten to nullify the human component uh, leading to the automation of uh, society. In my opinion, this debate must follow two main avenues of inquiry. The first must focus on the responsibility of the academic milieu and scientific researchers to develop a sustainable strategy capable of capitalizing upon scientific and technological progress. The second line of inquiry must tackle progress from a moral and ethical perspective. It is in this vein that pressing topics such as uh, artificial intelligence and uh, medical engineering need to be debated. It is my belief that such a debate is of, uh, of the utmost importance, especially so in times of crisis, when the fundamental values of mankind need to be uh, defended. The current world health crisis must be examined in all its guises, economic, politics, social, and more. 
the meaning of mass media almost exclusively conferred uh, is that of cataclysm or a disaster. In ancient the Chinese culture, however, the ideogram for crisis signified both danger and opportunity at the same time. Which opportunity? The opportunity for a change. Whose change? The change of the system. Which system? Of the current economic and political system. How attainable is this? For now, we understand that we cannot do without the current financial system in the absence of the functional alternative concept. But we can nevertheless limit the bank's greed. We cannot dismiss the current internal international security arrangement, but we can limit their abuse. This does not mean that a change must not be prepared in advance, as the recent health crisis uh, has uh, highlighted something even more profound. The dissonance between the current globalized political and economic system and the cultural model that served to define it upon its conception. One uh, major uh, issue lies in the fact that the dissonance between the real and the speculative economy on the one hand and that between bureaucratic administration and their cities that on the other uh, hand, have negatively affected an element essential to both democracy and the market economy, citizen trust. There is a risk that public discontent put on hold during the crisis might feed into movement bereft or ideology or leadership, uh, channeled by person without an identity and uh, mobilized uh, along social networks, which uh, taking advantage of the anomie created could then generate a protestocracy, then threatens representative democracy and creates the premises for a drift the towers authoritarian regimes. In, uh, in order to regain the trust of our citizens, merely restarting the social dialogue is not enough. It is necessary to create a new cultural model. As no new political project can be successful if not preceded by a founded upon a cultural model, one relying on moral values. These are the only values capable of linking together the positive energies of society. The 21st century requires a new cultural model. One not only able to counteract the economic and social shocks of globalization, but also capable of creating a vision of hope in a future, in a future characterized by chaotic developments and uncertainty. We now have a historic opportunity to put forward just such a project. Political and economic solutions imperatively required uh, at present uh, might be expedient in addressing the problem in the short term, but in the long run, will not prove efficient unless paired with the use of available intellectual resources to craft a new cultural model for the world to come. To create long-term strategies starting from existing politics, policies and uh, to later craft a vision of the future based on these long-term strategies, no matter how sustainable they were, 
only means uh, moving towards uh, the future, facing backwards. Conversely, should we start from an inspired vision of the future in the present, we can advance facing forward, noticing both first coming obstacles and impending dangers uh, at the same time. The current global health crisis is distracting our attention from one obvious observation, obscured by our obsession uh, with globalization. We are transitioning from a unipolar world, which uh, by the end of the Cold War replaced by the bipolar world of the East-West divide, to a world of multiple polarities. This uh, multipolar world opens up several new avenues and today no model can claim to provide the only solution anymore. Therefore, a critical examination of the globalization project, which cannot now be prevented from coming to pass, is always necessary and welcome, especially now when it appears to have been abandoned by the very state that initiated it, having become uncontrollable. And there is a temptation to use the ongoing pandemic in order to justify this abandon. If we continue to shape projects, without taking into account the inevitable anxieties involved in a political construct affecting the lives of our over 7 billion people, then we leave ourselves few opportunities to develop a robust and a democratic world. That is why I believe that the long road towards global solidarity should begin within every nation, local community, or even family. Here we often find manifested many of the contradictions typical to the global north-south or east-west divides. Yet here we also find the bonding agent of the common ethos. Thus, can we better understand the world we inhabit? The ongoing pandemic has occasioned an unprecedented situation in the history of mankind. Billions of people commonly agreeing to self-isolate for extended periods of time. Such a fit cannot by have psychological consequences. On the other hand, our confrontation with the virus and its economic and social consequences have uh, jerked the feeling of security inoculated by authoritarian regimes and post-war welfare state democracies alike. This sentiment of uncertainty, which today uh, attends towards becoming a new normal, has altered. In the evolution of human society, acclimatization crises are nothing new. Yet at present, uh, that occur much more rapidly and uh, reach much, uh, much further, a general process that feed individual uncertainties about the global village. The accelerated development of the relationship between uh, technological advancement and the economic has shaken the final decade of the 20th century, at the same time announcing two major uh, breakthroughs, globalization, twinned with an explosion of the knowledge. 
this has both drastically uh, heightened the level of uncertainty. In my opinion, politics as conceived uh, and uh, practiced today is not yet prepared to manage the great challenges we face in the new century and new millennium. And uh, a recourse to scientific experience might aid in this endeavor. Over the past century, science as an uh, outpost of knowledge has faced similar challenges to very heavy revolution in mathematics and physics brought about uh, by the transition from Euclidean to non-Euclidean geometry, from Newtonian uh, to quantum mechanism respectively. Science has uh, continuously and uh, consistently pressed uh, forward, updating and modifying both its logic and its language. The crisis of scientific language was overcome uh, through the semantic theory of information. The fuzzy sex theory gave rise to so-called fuzzy logic, a kick-starting the study of incomplete information system, which with the aid of stochastic uh, models can also analyze uh, real-world processes, how the evolution takes place according to the random rules of chains. Its application extended to uh, biology, uh, population dynamics, to uh, economics, uh, uh, fluid exchange rates, uh, to pedagogy, uh, learning processes uh, and algorithms. Uh, chaos theory allows us to analyze the unstable behavior of a uh, nonlinear dynamic system, wherein uh, many disturbance of the initial condition can well lead to completely um, different trajectories. Science has thus proven that uncertainty itself can be described, represented, and thoroughly understood. Politics, in its noble sense of serving the public interest, must embrace the uncertainty of the future, overcoming uh, the populist drift that is uh, deteriorating and uh, is hosting the limited resources available for long-term projects, and uh, counteracting this through a, a superior political project. It is not about uh, moving politics into uh, uncertain ground, but rather about uh, regarding individual's freedom as a core element of society. The essential difference between political systems then from the ways that manage uncertainty. Do they embrace uncertainty and attempt to reach solution through dialogue? Or do they try to eliminate uncertainty uh, altogether through a diktat of ideology, religion, or words? And the efficient management of uncertainty can only take place in a truly open society. Facing uh, high stakes can give rise to behaviors which answer the challenges of reality through adherence to underlying principles where we cannot act motivated by the certainty of success, we can then act out of consciousness of our duty. Politics in the society of knowledge and in a globalized world of tomorrow must be crafted as a complex vision of the future based on a new dialogue centered on fundamental human values. 
the current global health crisis, which has brought not our wealth, but our lives to the fore, forcibly imposes upon us a choice between to have or to be. It is therefore necessary to create a new system of arbitration between power and knowledge, capable of reshaping a framework wherein every individual can not only be, but also become.